My first speaker would be Alexander Dinkin, president of the Institute of the World Economy and International Relations, IMMO, academician Dinkin, and his institute does this uh, forecast for 20 years, which is pretty accurate, and uh, one which uh, I think the first time was issued five years ago, was it? Uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that was <laughs> very intriguing, interesting, and uh, correct uh, prediction of, of many things which happened after. So the floor is yours, Alexander, and my next speaker will be Michel Fouché. Uh, Igor, thank you, and thank you, Jury, for having me here. Uh, I have some doubts about the title of our workshop because nobody knows what will be the global architecture in 20 years. So. If somebody explain me how it would look, I, easily for me would be to talk about Russia. Um, let me start with the point that Russia is a rather complicated story. This is not the country for the beginners. And for those who have different views, I recommend to revisit Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, Solzhenitsyn, and so on, and you would understand what I'm uh, talking about. Uh, uh, for example, we still do not know the exact number of our casualties uh, during the Second World War. Uh, during Stalin, it was stated to be 7 million, in Khrushchev times 20, in Gorbachev 27. Uh, this February, during parliamentary hearings, the figure of 42 million were raised and it was based on the secret archives of the state planning committee. So ponder, 42 millions. And of course, those history is produced uh, a very heightened, very um, elevated threat perception in the country. And these characteristics, I guess, very important. And those who do not understand this threat perception uh, those persons hardly could be considered uh, like an um, expert in Russian question. Uh, this August, Dr. Henry Kissinger uh, raised an interesting question. He asks, is it the wisest course to pressure Russia and, if necessary, to punish it until it accepts Western views of its internal and global order? Where would this policy lead to? Um, in my perception, the answer is rather simple. It would bring this policy to a new bipolarity. On the one hand, it's supposed to be Russia, China, other BRICS members, CSTO members, members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. On the other side, it would be US, NATO, Japan, Australia, etc. And of course, the recent sanctions against uh, three completely different countries like DPRK, like Iran and Russia, they push the world towards this frightening, to my knowledge, scenario. Uh, the first conclusion out of this scenario, if it happened, I believe that in this case, in 10, 15 years, uh, Remimbi could become the new clearing currency for the whole globe. So uh, arrogance and ignorance when we talk about Russia is not he helpful. For example, 44th President of the United States believed that sanctions would tear apart our economy. As you may see, that does not happen. Um, economy adjusted to the new price structures and demonstrated moderate growth this year. It would be approximately 2%. Uh, despite that, according to some government experts' assessment, uh, the sanction damaged our economy by 1% of GDP annually. CPI uh, reached the historical minimum since 1992. Uh, better sentiment, domestic demand recovery, and construction activity ahead of the World Cup should keep supporting investments as well. Uh, several years ago, the hydrocarbon export generated two-thirds of our federal budget. Currently, its share is slightly above one-third. Um, grain crop production also reached its maximum, and the country would become number one in the grain 
expert this year. Uh, compare this with shameful mass scale grain import from Canada and the United States in the time of the Soviet Union. Um, let me show some uh, figures uh, tr trying to find the answer of where suppose Russia to be. Uh, this is our uh, long-term outlook. We produce it uh, every five years. On the left, uh, you may see the previous one. And Magritte picture is on the cover. I believe that this picture expresses very well the nature of the job of those who look ahead. The gentleman looking at the egg and painting the bird. This is the, uh, how I could describe the work of those who try to predict the future. On the right side is our recent um, it, uh, outlook. It's not yet translated uh, into English. It will be translated um, early next year. And there is a picture of a uh, Japanese uh, painter, Morimoto, who revisited the Magritte's, Magritte's picture. It became uh, more complicated. Uh, so this is our uh, assessments of the um, population growth and uh, global GDP growth, and you may uh, easily find out that the Russia's economic growth in the current part of patterns would be lower than the global economic growth, and this is the first observation. Um, uh, here you may find some approaches to this new bipolarity. On the left, this is G7. On the right, there is a bit artificially produced the new G7, and you may see that uh, economic might of those two grouping approximately the same, and this rather old figures is for the year 2015. Uh, here you may see our outlook about GDP per capita. The Russia is in uh, blue, and it's climbing up closer to the European Union figures. Uh, the China is supposed to be ahead of the average um, GDP per capita in the world, and of course the United States would be ahead. And the final picture which I would like to show you is that our assessment about the uh, crude oil demand peak. It's over the OECD countries, are there on a horizontal left side red curve. <laughs> Uh, Russia is still growing, but we predict that this mm, climax of the uh, crude oil demand would be something after 2035. And uh, currently, completely everybody in Russia understood that, and we are working in some structural changes in the economy. Uh, if nothing would happen, and Russia would continue with the growth of uh, average 2% a year. What does it mean in, mm, let's say, global hierarchy? Uh, today we are on the sixth position in PPP terms, and uh, if the growth would not be higher in uh, year 2035, we could find ourselves on the seventh place, just behind Brazil. In a real exchange rate, it means that Russia could slide down from current 10th place in the world GDP to 15th position right after Mexico. And those two countries, Brazil and Mexico, uh, I believe they are our real competitor, competitors in many senses, in the sense of institutional quality, regulation efficiency, and structural reforms. Uh, to overcome this inertia trend, uh, currently Alexei Kudrin and a group of uh, experts uh, are working on the comprehensive program of structural modernization and institutional build-up for sustainable and more competitive uh, economic growth. Uh, the desirable uh, GDP growth rate is 4% annually, but this is not, not the target. And the biggest departure from previous uh, reform programs, which we have a lot in the past, is that this is not just the economic exercise in the field of economy. This is more comprehensive set of roadmaps in legal sphere, in education, foreign affairs, defense policy, culture, etc. 
and the appropriate parts and blocks of this strategy debated in each respective ministry or agency, including Ministry of Defense. And uh, this iteration process is continued now, and the, as you may easily guess, there are certain resistance to those mostly liberal ideas of the authoritarian modernization. Uh, if that strategy would be accepted, it could diminish the uncertainty about the future economic policy. And uh, uncertainty, in my perception, is one of the major current uh, Russia risk. Other economic risks uh, which that strategy geared to diminish are weak property rights protection, investment climate, and corruption. Uh, but by the way, uh, the recent World Bank doing uh, business assessment for next year, it puts Russia on the 35th position. It's five steps up, and just five years ago, in 2012, we were on the 124 position. So it's substantial skyrocketing of the entrepreneurial uh, climate um, domestically. Um, talking about, let's say, foreign policy suggestions by Mr. Kudrin, is the diminishing confrontation with the West, uh, including easing tensions around Ukraine, is the narrative of the foreign policy part of this um, uh, program. So as history teaches us, um, demise of empire almost always uh, brings tectonic shifts in the world order. And it also leaves long-lasting territorial conflicts. Um, look at the Kashmir conflict, which is continued for 70 years after the British depart departure and gave us two nuclear states. Uh, the fall of the Ottoman Empire and the Sykes-Picot legacy largely feed the current bloody events in the Middle East. Uh, the dismantling of Yugoslavia and notably Kosovo provide another example. Uh, similarly, I believe that stalin Khrushchev borders drawn inside the Soviet Union according to short-term political expediency have left many territorial mines. And it is curious that there are so many fervent supporters of Stalin Khrushchev legacy in the West. Uh, in 2007, at the Munich Security Conference, Putin warned that the period of Russia's retreat and of the West exploding the troubles of the post communism transformation to sideline and marginalize Russia is over. A reaction, unfortunately, was simplistic. It was portrayed as an effort to launch a new Cold War. The following year, at the NATO summit in Bucharest, he declared that the fast track for Georgia and Ukraine, or the third wave of NATO enlargement, unacceptable for Russia. And if it happens, he called to fast on bells. This time, France and Germany insisted on canceling MIP. But spirit of uh, it prevailed, as, unfortunately, especially among new NATO members. Uh, in the West, there were no politicians with enough imagination to escape conventional wisdom. And this time, a mirror image of the Caribbean crisis was already visible. And this idea of supplying um, weapons, um, lethal weapons to Ukraine, I guess, one of very dangerous step uh, in those directions. So I don't know what would be the world order uh, in 20 years. I guess that m much courage and imagination is needed for choosing the road not traveled before. And without a new mode of dealing with each other and communication with each other, it would be impossible to find a bit more promising road. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexander. It uh, resonates with what Mr. David Aglu just said. We need some kind of a new system of uh, security, international cooperation, and so on and so forth. And if I understand you correctly, there is new bipolarity in the world, future and present, and new bipolarity in, inside Russia, progressives versus conservatives, which is very interesting uh, thing to watch.